Bob. Okay, you might have heard a little guffaw every so often. That was uh, the NDP member of our MP panel. Let's bring them in. They are Conservative MP Stella Ambler, NDP MP Jenny Sims, and Liberal MP Adam Vaughn. Welcome to you all. This board is set up to do precisely what it has done, and that's adjudicate over disputes on parliamentary spending. You lost. Why don't you pay up? First of all, you know, I hate this term, but I'm going to use it. It is a kangaroo court where the conservatives and liberals conspired, and we presented evidence that the work that was being done was done parliamentarian whose work was being carried out through these offices. The government has offices all across this country that they use for similar work. If not, uh, you know, I know it's through the ministers and things. But you know what, Don? We don't trust the internal board of economy to give us a fair hearing because we presented the documentation to them. We complied with the existing rules when they changed the rules. We followed those rules and they still went ahead. I believe this should be settled by an independent court, by our judicial system, where they can look at the evidence. We put forward, and I sat here when you put on the screen the kind of things that other people are putting out as well. And when I looked at these offices and when I had explained to them what happened there, they were doing the work of the parliamentarians. They were not doing party work and they presented no evidence that party work was being done. So, Stella, you and Adam here, your party leaders are conspiring against the poor old NDP, and you sit, you sit on the uh, Board of Internal Economy. How, how, how do you plead on this one? It's very clear that the NDP broke the rules. There are clear rules about what you can use public funds for. And it was very clear that these people were not working in MPs' offices. They were working in what amounted to party offices. They were satellite offices. And the total cost over the last number of years was determined to be uh, $2.7 million by the House administration. So the NDP, for months, this the decision was made uh, months ago. Uh, they've been dragging their heels on paying it back. Canadian taxpayers deserve more respect than that. They owe the money. They should pay it back. They were directed to pay it back, and, um, and, and they're not doing it. So, uh, still, frankly, uh, I think this shows that wanted to negotiate. a pattern. This shows a clear pattern of abuse by the NDP of taxpayer dollars. Adam, what's the, the Liberal take on this? Well, it, there are clear rules. The, the money is to be used in your role as a parliamentarian, as an elected official, not in partisan ways. Uh, it's there to help you serve your constituents, uh, and when the rules aren't uh, adhered to, there are consequences. And, and uh, th this, this body of parliament, which has jurisdiction here, is, has made a ruling, uh, and, and uh, I guess we'll just, just see where it goes from here. But, but rules are rules, and when you're a newly elected member, as I was, um, it's spelt out for you very clearly, and, and uh, there's been a breach. Uh, we followed the rules. Well, the rules as they were then so and the rules later. And as I said, we don't trust the people who sit it's on the board Stella the two here. parties uh, trust uh, Stella. I have a great All fondness party. for I have great fondness for Stella but at the same you know? time I believe you know I don't agree with you or with the uh, reporter who said uh, they don't really want to make it political this is political this is uh, two parties who are trying to change the channel and I know Don you media you love a scandal no, or the whip no, of one of course scandals. you do and I understand that but here we have the government doesn't really want to talk about the economy and the mess they've made of that. And, you know, each party is trying to change the channel. Instead of dealing with real issues, what they would rather do is chase windmills. So let the court decide. And I think all the evidence will get to present it. I'd love it. to see this if it was a Liberals in trouble. You'd be screaming for their heads, too. But I'm, I'm curious. This board is. This is the sort of thing it's set up to do. And, it, and you can't just say, we're not going to abide by that board's wishes because we don't like this decision. Don't you all agree to be part of that board and then abide by the decisions? But if the board doesn't give you due process, hasn't given you a fair hearing, wouldn't even let you present, or what you did present they totally ignored, true? then I think you have every right to say we need a judicial review. First of all, let me say something else, Don. We live in a country where we believe in the rule of law. And here we are by this secretive board, and they're the ones who keep releasing everything, not us. But, you know, when we've tried to present material there, they're not letting us uh, present those materials. And you know what? Let the courts decide, and then we'll have a, a follow-up conversation. Does this have to go to court? <laughs> 
Uh, it, it is in court. The NDP have decided to take it to court, but yes. um, but it is it's a board. Uh, it was a board decision. This is a House of Commons administration. They are absolutely allowed to make the rules um, and and enforce <laughs> them, and they have done and that. Wrong? They made a decision. They, well, they're not wrong. It's an all party. Um, uh, board and they, they we voted and um, the direction was clear. You broke the rules. The you have to decide. pay the money back. See, I always thought you had satellite offices and they were called MP offices and that's where you did your parliamentary business. Well, and there's one in every well, riding. Well, well, let the well, courts decide. They're actually not called MP offices. They're constituency offices and they're there to provide services to constituents. They're not there to build a party structure. They're there to build a relationship. But there is no with evidence that what was happening was a party structure was being built. There were clear delineation between the work that was being carried out by the parliamentary staff. They were dealing with the MP issues. All right. And it was a matter of coordination. And it should have been in the ridings, not in Montreal. Interesting. All right, there are other, are other issues. I wouldn't mind bringing One or two. And, and there is another liberal conservative conspiracy going on Oh, here. that's a real yes. coalition uh, happening. I just want to bring in a clip from Justin Trudeau today where he's agreed to go along with the conservative anti-terrorism bill. Here's what he had to say. This bill can be improved, but on the whole, it does include measures that will help keep Canadians safe. As such, the Liberal Party will support it. Matters of national security should be beyond partisanship. We will take a constructive approach to improving this bill. Liberals welcome the measures that build on the powers of preventative arrests, make better use of no-fly lists, and allow for more coordinated information sharing by government departments and agencies. All right, Stella, I want to bring you in first on this. It seems like the Liberals are throwing a pretty big olive branch out there, saying we're on side with a major piece of legislation here, but we'd like to see some more oversight. Is there any chance the government might extend the olive branch back and say, OK, we, you think we got a point here? Uh, let me say this about uh, about the oversight uh, mechanism. Uh, it's one that in Canada has been in place for 30 years and has worked well, has served us well. Uh, we've actually come around uh, on that issue uh, of oversight to uh, an, uh, a liberal opinion from 2005 uh, where they decided that they, they the Liberals said civilian oversight is the way to go, and uh, and so that's exactly what we have. Um, we have independent, third-party, non-partisan expert um, oversight uh, of of our national security, and uh, and so now all of a sudden this is something new that the Liberals do. It's convenient for the Liberals at, to support this bill that's currently uh, here at home and and before our uh, Parliament. It's, it's not but a question what, of convenience. It, what the sorry. Liberals? It's not a question of convenience. It's, it's, it's look at circumstances have changed around national security. It's, a, it, it's the mm -hmm. right thing to do to review the rules and regulations and the laws. Uh, but there's a balance that needs to be struck. And as we as we change some of the fundamental rights that Canadians currently enjoy, it's critical that it be parliamentary oversight. Civilian oversight um, it, it, it is the cornerstone of good democracy and good policing. And so what we've asked for is, is parliamentary oversight, the same sort of oversight that's in New Zealand, in Australia, it's in England, it's in the United States. We need the same thing here. We have now combined our security forces, CSIS and RCMP and other agencies, uh, and, and it's a new structure. It therefore needs new oversight. That oversight should be parliamentary in nature. The second thing, and we're also asking for this, and if this isn't uh, put in the bill through the, the committee process, it'll be on our, our, our platform in the next election, is that as you start to give uh, CSIS and RCMP new responsibilities, you must also start to build their budgets to fulfill those capacities. And unfortunately, this government has cut those budgets, cut them rather significantly, and that means that we're not only a getting new responsibilities, there's no oversight and there's no capacity and that worries us but we'll work with the government to try and strengthen this bill. First of all I believe that every parliamentarian in that house wants to take on terrorism and wants to address the issues of security. Mm -hmm. The major issue here is that yes absolutely security is important but so are our civil liberties and it's how do you protect both and uh, I was a little bit gobsmacked when I heard uh, the uh, leader of the uh, third party say that he was going to be supporting it even though he gave a long speech on where the huge holes were. Well, we're going to go into that committee, we're going to move amendments and we're going to do our very best to make it the best legislation it can be. And we're not going to prejudge 
where we're going to go with this. And, you know, I also want to talk about, over the last few days, we've had some arrests, as you know, happen. Mm -hmm. And I keep thinking, the current legislation seems to be working fairly well. And uh, I also have to say this, there's some real ways we could be taking on radicalization of youth right here at home. There are agencies like the groups in my constituency where CBS, say, the RCMP and my office, we've been working together on how to tackle this issue on the ground and there could be some resources allocated to those. We're also hearing from CSIS and RCMP and everybody, yeah. they are over stretched for their resources. I mean, we heard last year after the incident in, on the Hill, well, you know, we, if we took all our forces and deployed them that way, we could follow those who are on our suspect list. But so, really, it's about resourcing, but it's also, and let me finish with this, okay, if, you, <laughs> if we don't protect our civil liberties and put them like side by side, both as equally as important, then I think we open up some dark doors. They've got some points here. They need resources to go with right. the, the extra a powers. And absolutely. And so that's why we've provided a one third budget increase. A total of one third of their budget um, for national security forces has been increased. But um, uh, and so, well, that's just a fact. Um, uh, a fact. They it's they have absolutely. We believe that we need to give them the resources. You know, I, I think what's happening right now with the Liberals support. Supporting this bill, the anti-terror bill, is that is is frankly it's a bit of a red herring. This is something they're doing back home, but ultimately, let's be clear: they, the Liberals, do not support our fight on global terrorism. The oh, international like jihadi yeah. movement oh, has friend. declared <laughs> I mean, war I, I, sure on Canada, on here. Canadians, <laughs> on our values, and they do not Why stand. So your, party your party does not stand shoulder to shoulder you know, with us oh, in Andrea, our fight I get rad with we're our done allies so in Iraq. Hard? For your party to collaborate yeah. and work with other people when they you get when you get agreement. You're not really you, supporting you, you us. us. You're not supporting our mission against ISIL. It's well, that every clear. One of us, every I love one it of if us. you're. Does, do, do, you, do you agree? ISIL, okay? that I, I'm Adam. Do you think that the, the uh, international jihadist movement? Would you would you agree to call it that? Do, would you say that they're the, at war with Canada? Okay, well, let's not change the oh, dial. We're talking about the, the terrorist the bill. He's on side. The terrorist bill addresses this. Is that is that you've tabled legislation? We think it can be improved. We want to work with you to get that improvement in place. The funding needs to be put in place. The balance between civil liberties and protection is a critical thing and, and requires oversight of Parliament. And, 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 and all we're doing is, is, is saying, look, let's work together. This should not be a partisan issue. This is about safeguarding well, Canadian rights our and safeguarding Canada. And, and, and we are trying to work all with right. you. But instead so, of that, we are out of the I mean, okay, let's take this into the green room. Off you go. Thank you all.